This video will teach you how to create analysis geometry and apply loads to it. You will use the AutoCAD based preprocessor Sophie Plus. First, create a wireframe structure with simple AutoCAD lines. This way you can use all AutoCAD functionalities. Afterwards, you can assign the structural elements referencing these AutoCAD lines. Creating the geometry of the 2D slab is a quick task. Use the rectangle command and start drawing from the origin point. The slab has a length of 20 meters and a width of 10 meters. Now let's divide the rectangle in half vertically. This task is easy if you activate the midpoint option in the AutoCAD object snap settings. Let's draw another line. A little triangle indicates the midpoint of the rectangle. Also divide the left part horizontally into two parts. Now that the reference geometry is ready, it is time to learn more about the Sophie Plus sidebar. The Sophie Plus sidebar works the same way as the project navigation in the Sophistic Structural Desktop, from top to bottom. Let's start with the system section. Materials and cross sections were already ready for your example. The Structural Elements tab is the key for creating the analysis model. First, create the required structural areas representing the concrete slab. The concrete slab has a thickness of 240 mm. When you right click into the AutoCAD workspace, the drop down menu shows you further options to create structural areas. Here we choose point in area. Next click inside the top left area. Sophie Plus recognizes its boundaries. Then the load definition dialog opens up. A 2D slab system was selected for this project. For this type of project, two load cases are automatically assigned when creating a slab. Load case 1 represents permanent loads. The other load case is for imposed loads. The load case number for the imposed loads will increase automatically. Assign 1 kN per square meter to the permanent and 3 kN per square meter to the imposed load. To apply these settings to other structural areas in this project, tick the Show Dialog Once Only box. You can change the load settings of the structural area at any time. Confirm with OK. Sophie Plus automatically finds the structural area boundaries and adds load cases 1 and 2. The option Point in Area is still active, so you can click inside the next area of the slab. Once you created all structural areas, press the Escape key twice to close the Structural Area command. Well done! You successfully created your first structural area in Sophie Plus. You can export the structure and generate the finite elements to check for plausibility. Just click the export command at the top of the Sophie Plus sidebar. The export dialog opens, allowing you to adjust settings such as the meshing properties for the finite elements. The preset is fine for this project, so there is no need to tweak anything. Click OK to confirm the input. If Sophie Plus encounters any problems during the export process, a warning or error message will appear in the Message tab of the Sophie Plus sidebar. Once Sophie Plus completes the export, go to Sophistic Structural Desktop and check the structure in the Viewer. In the Viewer you will find an Update button on the top left. Click it to load the updated system. You can see the finite element mesh and the quad elements based on the structural area created earlier. Let's go back to Sophie Plus. It's time to investigate the assigned loads of the project. Open the Loads tab in the Sophie Plus sidebar and start the Load Case Manager. 
The first table shows you the actions defined in your system. Action G and Action Q are already available for this project. In the Load Cases tab, Sophie Plus added four individual load cases while creating the structural areas. Sophistic is capable of automatically calculating the self-weight of the entire structure. All you have to do is to set the factor of dead weight for load case 1 to 1. The dead load case will be automatically calculated by the program. Confirm the changes with OK. You can use Modify Structural Area to check or modify every aspect of a structural area. This also includes the loads you assigned while creating the structural areas. In the tab Structural Elements, you can find the Structural Area command on the left and the small Structural Area Modify command on the right. Commands on the left always create elements, while those on the right allow you to adjust those elements. Select the Modify command, pick an area and hit Enter. The Structural Area property dialog opens, allowing you to modify the element. In the Loads tab, you could adjust the load values applied to the structural area. All other individual element loads will be listed in this table. With the Structural Areas complete, let's move on to Support Conditions and the T-Beam. Use Structural Lines to create line supports. Start the Line command within the Structural Elements tab. In the Support Conditions tab, select a support in Global Set Direction, P Set Set. There are multiple options to define support lines in your model. The default option is Point to Point, but you can access advanced options by right-clicking in the AutoCAD drawing area. Let's go ahead with Pick Lines or Curves. This way you can select the lines individually and assign the defined support conditions. If multiple lines are overlaid, Sophie Plus will ask you which one to select. In this example, let's select the AutoCAD line instead of the boundary of the structural area. Keep going until you select every line and close the Structural Line dialog box by hitting the Escape key. Next up is the T-Beam. The T-Beam gets created between Structural Areas 1 and 2. You created the T-Beam cross-section in the previous video. To assign the T-Beam cross-section to a Structural Line, start the Line command. This time go to the Beam Cable tab to select a centric beam. Now you can select the T-Beam section. In the final step, right-click to open the context menu and pick Line to Curve. Now place the beam in the system. Sophie Plus will again ask which line to select. Close the Structural Line dialog box by hitting Escape. You can preview the system by moving it in 3D in AutoCAD. Lastly, let's add three columns represented as structural points into the 2D system. Select the Point command. In the tab Lower slash Upper column, you consider the structural point as a vertical elastic spring. The diameter of our circular column is 0.3 meters, concrete material 1 is correct, and the column's length is 3 meters. One way to place the structural point in the drawing area is to enter the column coordinates. Let's do that for all three columns. With that, the structural model is complete and we are ready to export. Export the model to update the changes to the database. Exporting does not save your changes in the AutoCAD drawing. Please save the AutoCAD project separately. Vice versa, saving your AutoCAD project 
will not trigger an export to the Sophistic database. Back in the Sophistic Structural Desktop, remember to update the recent changes using the Update button on the top left. You can use the viewer to review and check your model. You can see the thickness of the slab, the T-beam, the supports and the springs, representing the columns underneath the slab. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.